It's 2022 and every morning I wake up and I look at the travel scratch map above my bed and I see the golden spaces not diminishing and I find it frustrating, but I have decided that I am going to assume that travel is going to resume because it rhymes and also because I want it to be true. And if you are feeling optimistic this year as well, this is the video for you. Before I introduce you to those 25 countries, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video. Our sponsor is Wise, formerly known as TransferWise, and I do actually know it by its former name because I have been using this service for a long time. Wise is an international account that allows you to send money to more than 80 countries with no hidden fees and the real exchange rate. According to their research, WISE is on average seven times cheaper than old school banks when you withdraw, spend, or send money abroad, which results in some pretty incredible savings. Not only can you send money abroad, you can also hold more than 50 currencies in your account and convert between them instantly. What I really love about WISE is that all the costs are shown to you upfront. There's a calculator on the homepage where you can see exactly how much it's gonna cost you to make each transaction. The WISE International account also gives you access to a debit card, which you can use when you travel to make different transactions or withdraw money, again, with no additional fees. And just generally, I really like WISE because I feel like they're so transparent and you know exactly where you stand at all times. And finally, they allow you to save more money while you travel, which is the exact topic of this video. Our first continent is Asia and our first budget destination is Vietnam. Vietnam is a really beautiful, super diverse country. It's true that Vietnam and other countries in Southeast Asia are getting progressively more and more expensive, but they are still very affordable, especially by Western standards. And one way that you can make them affordable, and this is true of every single destination I'm gonna to mention today, is eating local. So not going to Western style restaurants, but eating how the locals eat and living how the locals live. Really, the more you emulate the local population, the cheaper your prices are gonna be. And personally for me as well, that is a more fun way to travel. It's not always as luxurious or as comfortable, but it's much more insightful. Next up, we've got Cambodia. The country is known for its impressive temples like Angkor Wat, where Lara Croft Tomb Raider was filmed back in 2000. Cambodia also has gorgeous white sand beaches, jungles, and delicious food. To learn about a horrifying chapter from Cambodia's recent history, visit the Killing Fields. Let's lighten the mood now. Another Southeast Asian favorite is the Philippines. If you love hanging out at the beach, you'll be pleased to know that the country comprises 7,640 islands, about 2,000 of which are inhabited. You can swim with whale sharks, scuba dive, surf, and if that's not your thing, you can visit Manila and enjoy the big city life. Before we move on to our next region of Asia, I wanna mention Laos, Thailand, Myanmar, all these countries in Southeast Asia are also super affordable. Thailand, personally, I absolutely love traveling around because not only does it have really interesting culture, I love the food, but also it's really easy to go there as a solo backpacker. Now, we're gonna move on to our next one, which is Nepal. You can learn about Nepalese culture and Buddhism in Kathmandu, test your fitness levels with an Everest base camp hike, or perhaps do some volunteering. Nepal suffered a devastating earthquake in 2015, and there are many rebuilding projects in need of help. I have a few videos on volunteering responsibly if you'd like to have a look. Another great budget destination is Sri Lanka. I haven't actually been myself, but I know a lot about the country, partly from doing research and partly because one of my housemates actually used to live and work there. So um, I have heard a lot of anecdotes. I know how incredible the food is. I have tried it many times here in London. So good. Our next destination is a big one. It's India. And I feel like you could spend two years traveling around this country and feel like you've barely scratched the surface. It's so so incredibly diverse in the south you've got Kerala which is really luscious and green then you've got Goa if you're really into nightlife and maybe doing yoga or something a bit more spiritual then in the north you've got Rajasthan with the desert and the various like colorful cities absolutely incredible country and um, incredibly incredibly affordable to travel around Next up, we've got Georgia. Now, I feel like over the past maybe five years, it has suddenly become a lot more popular, mainly, I think, because the flights have become cheaper from Europe, and for a good reason. Their hospitality is seriously impressive, and you'll experience it the second you go through passport control, where visitors receive a bottle of local red wine. Definitely a tradition I can get behind. 
The Caucasus Mountains are perfect for hikers. For a lazier holiday, there's the sandy Black Sea coastline. And for a more urban trip, there's Tbilisi or Kutaisi. Our next addition to the list, again, absolutely huge country, Indonesia. I know it doesn't get talked about that much in travel circles outside of Bali, but it should because it has such a fascinating culture. It's the biggest Muslim majority country in the entire world. While you're there, visit the island of Komodo, home of the so-called Komodo dragon, as well as the picture-perfect pink beach. Or head to Borobudur, where you'll find the largest Buddhist temple in the world, or how about climbing Indonesia's second tallest peak, Mount Rinjani, an active volcano on Lombok, which is Bali's sister island. Now, this next country came as a bit of a surprise to me when I was doing my research, which, by the way, I did using this website, which lists the average travel cost for each country based on um, data collected from different travelers. So very, very handy resource if you're doing that kind of research. And the country is Iran. I don't know why, but in my head, I had it saved as a place that was a little bit inaccessible to travelers. Now that is true to an extent. American, British, and Canadian passports all need a visa. And in order to get one, you will need to book your trip with a certified local travel agency in Iran. It's not the easiest process, but it will allow you to visit amazing places like the Pink Mosque in Shiraz, the bustling capital of Tehran and its iconic Azadi Tower, Zoroastrian temples in Yazd, and the desert of Varzana. Our next country is a bit of a personal favorite, and that is Turkey. It is again a very large country and has so much diversity starting from Istanbul this incredibly historic architecturally interesting capital which lies across two continents but it doesn't stop there you've got Pamukkale you've got uh, Cappadocia with those hot air balloons really popular now you can also go ride horses there and you've got Ankara the capital Gaziantep the, ah just what a country highly highly recommend visiting our next country I also recommend visiting and I'm mainly making that recommendation to myself because I still haven't been. I meant to visit last year, but it just didn't work out. And that country is Kazakhstan. Now, I hope your only association isn't to the film Borat, but if it is, that's okay. Let's learn a bit more about it now. Nur Sultan and Almaty are both modern cities with lots to do. Some more offbeat destinations to visit include Candy Lake, which is full of submerged trees, or the Baikonur Cosmodrome, the world's oldest and largest space launch facility. And then there's all the impressive nature, the large rock boulders in Mangistau, Burabai National Park and Charon Canyon, reminiscent of the Grand Canyon in the US. Our last Asian entry is Mongolia, the realm of Genghis Khan, this country of lush steppies and horses and yurts. Because tourism is still in its nascent stages, exploring Mongolia can be challenging. Many travel companies, for example, aren't listed online. So it's best to start in Ulaanbaatar, the capital, where it's easy to contact tour providers who can take you to see the rest of the country, including the Gobi Desert, Altai Mountains, Buddhist monasteries, and perhaps arrange a horse trek, although this will require a little more budget. Our next continent is Latin America, and that's gonna encompass South America, Central America, and the Caribbean in this case. We're gonna start off with South America and Ecuador. Begin with Quito because of its well-preserved 16th century center. Other fun spots to visit include Baños, great for adventure travel, ancient ruins in Inca Perca, and lodges along the Amazon. The Galapagos Islands are also technically part of Ecuador, but they're less of a budget destination. Next up, we've got Peru, which is primarily known as the home of Machu Picchu, but there's a lot more to that country because when you see its shape on a map, you see it's very long and that results in really varied landscapes. For a bit more adventure, head to Manu National Park with its abundant wildlife, the lost city of Choquequirá, or the desert. Next up, we've got neighboring Bolivia. This country, again, has really interesting, diverse natural landscapes. You've got Lake Titicaca, worth a visit just to chuckle at the name. Then you've got Laguna Colorada, this huge sprawling pink lake full of flamingos. What a place. Our final South American entry is Colombia, the land of Shakira and many, many more things. Colombia is the world's third largest producer of coffee, right behind Brazil and Vietnam. And a visit to one of the local farms is a great low cost activity. Then there's Tyrona National Park full of wild monkeys, urban Medellin and its impressive cable cars, and the busy capital of Bogota with its political street art. 
Now let's move on to Central America, starting with Guatemala. This is a country that I have always wanted to visit. I haven't got around to it yet, but the reason why I feel so drawn to it is all that volcanic activity. I, I like to live life on the edge. Guatemala is not the easiest country to travel around. You need to be prepared for things going wrong, transport links like local chicken buses being crowded and not arriving on time, being cautious in certain areas, but this is true whenever, wherever, and in Guatemala you'll be rewarded with lively markets, a fascinating indigenous culture, Mayan ruins at Tikal, and all those active volcanoes I mentioned earlier. Next, I want to mention Honduras, which is home to the incredible Copan ruins, the remnants of the Mayan civilization. Absolutely fascinating UNESCO World Heritage Site. Honduras is one of the lesser visited countries in Central America because of a slightly negative reputation, safety-wise. And look, before you travel anywhere, you should check your government's travel advice to avoid potential threats. But generally speaking, Honduras is well worth a visit. Our final spot in Central America may not be what you're expecting. I could mention Nicaragua, and I'm glad I just have, because it's a great place to visit and also a great budget destination. But the one I want to talk about is El Salvador. Volcanoes, waterfalls, mine ruins, coffee plantations. It's not a large country, but it packs a lot in and all on a strict budget. And finally, on the Latin American Spanish speaking front, we have one destination in the Caribbean. The reason the Caribbean doesn't feature more heavily is that it does tend to be a little pricier than other destinations in that region. But this one place I think you could make work on that budget, and that is Cuba. I've never been to Cuba, so the way I picture it is probably a little romanticized. But have you seen what Havana looks like? Then there's the Vinales Valley with coffee and tobacco plantations, or how about Ernest Hemingway's former home where he wrote The Old Man and the Sea and For Whom the Bell Tolls. Okay, two continents down, two left to go, and our next continent is Africa. Again, a reminder that there are chapters at the bottom of this video, and you can skip from one continent to another as you please. Our first destination, you can actually see right there behind me, and it's Morocco. I love this country. Morocco is absolutely beautiful. I visited back in 2014 with my friend Becky, and it was kind of my first like proper trip you know we went and stayed in this small town of 20,000 um, with a Berber family who showed us um, their way of life and we stayed on a farm we walked donkeys we got water from the well and it just really left a deep impression of me and really formed how I like to travel I really want to go back to see the blue village of Shoshawan Fez, Casablanca, Rabat, Tangier, and go surfing in Tahazud. So fingers crossed, I managed to visit again in 2022. Our next African entry is Egypt. And if you feel like my entries for Africa skew North African, there's a reason for that. That region is far more affordable than anything south of that. Um, generally speaking, when you travel Africa, like the, the full continent, um, transport tends to be more expensive. Accommodation, sadly, also, because there just aren't that many hostels around. And yeah, there just tends to be a premium, quite expensive visas for a lot of the countries, which is why a lot of them didn't make the list as much as I wanted them to. Like, I really wanted to mention Malawi, but I don't think it's feasible under $20 a day. Um, however, it is a good African budget destination, so I snuck it in there. But let's talk Egypt because, I mean, what a country, right? Historically speaking, it's one of the best ones. You've got the pyramids, you've got Alexandria, the, the old library, or how about a diving trip in Dahab, a former Bedouin fishing village. A hike to the summit of Mount Sinai, a popular pilgrimage site sacred to Christians, Jews, and Muslims. You could also go on a Nile river cruise, although this would put you over a $20 per day budget. Our next country is Rwanda, and I'm really happy to be mentioning this country because it's a fascinating case study in African economic development. By far the most popular activity in Rwanda is silverback gorilla trekking, a once in a lifetime activity, but a pricey one. Instead, you can go on an ape free hike, learn about local crafts, explore the modern capital of Kigali. Our final African destination is listed as Tanzania, but I'm not actually talking about the country at large. Tanzania in general is a fairly expensive place to travel around, but there is one exception, and that is the island of Zanzibar. Now, if that evokes thoughts of luxury, 
that's okay. That is completely fair. It has a lot of these all-inclusive five-star resorts that are super, super fancy. But Zanzibar, and in particular its historic Stone Town, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, has a lot of hostels where you can stay for very cheap and a lot of these small eateries that all the locals go to where you can get some pretty incredible food. Our final continent, Europe. Now Europe might be a bit of an unexpected entry. You might think, hmm, is it really possible to travel anywhere in Europe for under $20 a day? And now, of course, we need to currently caveat all of these um, with PCR tests, lateral flows, entry requirements that might cost a lot of money. But generally speaking, I think we have three very strong contenders, starting with Poland. I live in London and you can get unbelievably cheap flights to Warsaw, Krakow, Wroclaw and the port city of Gdansk. If you're not a big city person, you can go hiking in the Tatra Mountains or the Beskids. Or you can try bison spotting in Bielowieża Forest, one of the last remaining stretches of primeval wood in Europe. Our second European entry is Albania. This country isn't on most tourists' radars, even within Europe, but it is really interesting. There's the Albanian Riviera with sandy shores, beach bars and international music festivals. Tirana has incredibly cheap food, drink and tourist attractions for a European capital, Berat known as the City of a Thousand Windows, is one of Albania's oldest towns and has earned a spot on the UNESCO World Heritage List. And our final European entry, and also our final final entry, is the Ukraine. Ukraine. I really like Eastern Europe partly because I hail from the part of the world I am Czech. Czech Republic couldn't get featured. We're not cheap enough. We just miss it. Although it is an affordable country for sure. Um, but the Ukraine is super affordable. If you love the outdoors, I recommend the Carpathian Mountains and also the port city of Odessa next to the Black Sea. Ukraine is home to many impressive cities actually, from Kiev, the capital, to Lviv and Chernivtsi, the birthplace of famous actress Mila Kunis. If you've been to any of the countries I mentioned, I would love to hear your thoughts and impressions on them. And thank you to WISE for sponsoring this video because it makes my work here on YouTube possible. So I really appreciate it. And if you enjoyed this video and aren't subscribed yet, then please subscribe, obviously. And I will see you next Friday when I put out new videos. Bye.